What might happen if the individuals in your organization could embrace their scars and actually learn from their mistakes? What might happen if those same individuals could dream big again regarding what's possible through their life and not make excuses along the journey? What might happen if those individuals could play in perfect symphony with the members on their team? And what might happen if one day, one presentation and one story could positively change the lives of those members in that group? This is John O'Leary, and I look forward to partnering with your organization, your church, your school, your business, and reminding them a simple truth that as beautiful and as amazing as the story may be that they may be watching, it's nowhere near as amazing as a story that they have the opportunity, the invitation, and the mandate to write through their own life. When I was a little guy, I saw some other kids in our neighborhood playing with fire and gasoline. These boys would sprinkle gasoline, they would strike a match, throw it on top, and it would boom, spark to life. We were just curious little boys. And I saw what they were doing, I figured, I can do that too. The fumes inhaled my flame up and into this canister, and it created this massive explosion. This explosion that split a metal can in two. It spewed five gallons over my, over my body, it ignited me, picked me off, and blasted me 15 feet against the far side of the garage. stood on top of this rug, burning and begging for somebody to come and fight for me, save my life. You have been burning and you've wondered, do I have what it takes to make the next step forward in my journey? We've all been there. This next picture is gonna be really tough to see, so if you wanna look down for a moment, go ahead. But I found myself with burns, on 100% of my body, 87% were third degree. I was on my back and in the emergency room dying. And when that's you on your back, there's one thought going through your mind. And for me as a little guy, it was, oh my gosh, my dad is going to freaking kill me when he finds out. They stand looking over me. Now he's pointing at me and pointing at me is never a good thing. And he says, John, I have never been this proud. And that morning mom had the courage not to say, babe, this is a sunburn. You're gonna be out of here tonight. But to remind me that accountability still matters, even at the age of nine. So she asked me a question, and the question was, John, do you want to die? It's your call. Dad and I can't make it for you. You see this picture up here, what you're probably thinking is, oh my gosh, this poor kid went through so much as a little boy. And then he had to settle on a girl like that. You know? <laughs> And I appreciate your sympathy, you know. <laughs> in life, it's very easy to point out the flaws in others, in markets, in our own organization. That's easy. Anybody can do it. It takes courage to find what's right with others, what's right with the organization, what's right with the market, and what we're going to do to make it better. In grade school, I never dated a soul. Right? I looked a little goofy, as you saw earlier. In high school, I had a lot of girlfriends, but I didn't date any of them. College, the drought continues, if you can imagine. Right? And then my senior year, I meet this girl named Beth, and I know she's the one. So I build up the courage to ask this girl on a date. We've been friends now for a little bit. And so you can imagine the shock when she says no, right? No. And then she kind of picked me up gently and, and broke my back by saying, John. <laughs> you are like a brother to me, right? Yeah. Some of you men heard that last night, okay? <laughs> uh, 
And, and unless it was coming from your sister, it wasn't a good thing. No. <laughs> When you face rejection, whether you're talking about going into your client's office, your prospects, your girlfriends, when you face that rejection, you get nailed down. It's so easy to just kind of say, Dang, I'm done with that. I'm done. Ask yourself today, what got me out of bed early? What am I fighting for? What's going to cause me not to miss that flight home? What am I fighting for back there? You know, we may not ask ourselves these questions very often, but they're critical, absolutely critical to our success. Today, what are you fighting for? Where do you want to go? What difference do you want to make? What about the little boy you see in that picture right now? What about his choice to fight? And in that picture, what strikes you about my face? Right, I heard a couple people say it. He's smiling. He's sitting there because he can't stand. Roy's done all he can, but he still won't stand for several months. He's at home because he can't go to school. That's gonna be about eight more months out. He's got that goofy wrap on his head because they just keep scalping him. He's lost his fingers. He's got scars from his neck to his toes. He's a mess. And yet when he looks in the mirror, he's smiling. You can't always choose the path that you walk in life. But you can always choose the manner in which you walk it. Really, for real about it, is we train up here. And it makes perfect sense. But we live and we sell and we buy down here. And there is very often this disconnect. That joy, regardless of the challenges you face out there in the field and at home and in your relationships and with your finances, that joy is a choice. Don't let some lousy market pull it away from you. That's your choice. I hope and wish you continued success on your journey forward, and I thank God for you being here today. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the opportunity to watch this video. At Rising Above, we partner with organizations to ignite passion, transform challenges, and fulfill potential. We look forward to partnering with you in creating a program that will do exactly that for you, for your team, and for your organization.